appreciate you guys. Your support means the most. And we should have Seti Coscarella joining us any moment. Oh, there we go. Hello, Seti. Hey, Rich. How are you? Good, buddy. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Welcome on the show. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Trying to keep up with you, my friend. <laughs> so How's it going? I'm I'm going great. You know, uh, I've been talking all day about the fact that Tad is so unique because typically when companies in Canada, specifically in Canada, raise money, it's a dilutive event and the stocks go down. But here you are. You guys just raised another $10 million mm -hmm. with Horizon Ventures and mm -hmm. Debbie Chang's group. They've now invested 26700000 into TAT. Mm -hmm. And the stock's going up today. Not much, but it's up. It's not down. Mm -hmm. That's what makes TAT so unique is you guys are playing 3D chess. You're not playing checkers. You're not desperately looking for someone to give you money. You guys are being strategic with every single move you make. Would you agree that this is a strategic partnership and you can clearly see that with the market responding positively, this is what makes TAT so unique. Would you agree with that statement? Yeah, I try to not run around the street yelling, King me. Yes. <laughs> 3D chess, baby. 3D chess. So what do you think about this news? Like, you guys clearly have a, a major partner here with Debbie Chang. Mm -hmm. And um, what does this mean for Tat to be able to have a partner like this you guys can keep going to whenever you need money? Look, I think it's an encouraging sign. Um, they tend to invest early in companies that they think have the have a strong likelihood of being able to disrupt a particular industry. So whether it be companies like Facebook or Zoom or Dollar Shave Club or Siri before it got bought out by Apple, um, they've got a pretty good eye for this thing. And I think that when we presented this opportunity to them last year, obviously they liked it. I mean, they went through the whole due diligence process and, and, and they liked it. And they've been tremendous partners. And, you know, at this stage, they they were wanting to put in some more money. I was saying, okay, I think we can make that happen. Um, and here we are. So, you know, I think the beauty of a partner like this is they tend to be long-term holders. They, they see these things as, you know, longer time horizon when, and I think that's why they're probably called horizons because they have a longer time horizon. Um, they tend to be pretty sticky investors because they're not going to put their time and effort I mean, when you have access to deals like Facebook and Zoom and, and, and companies like this, you get pitched thousands of times a day. So they're not really going to invest their time and effort into things that they don't think have a viable shot. And again, I'm putting words in their mouth. But if I'm on their side, that's what I'm thinking. So when you see an opportunity like this that has such an enormous opportunity or an enormous trajectory in front of it, and based on the results to date from when they put in the capital and how we use the money and the value that we were able to create for our shareholders and the business that we were able to build, they're probably thinking, okay, this is, you know, this is a no brainer. I want to, I want to be able to participate in this thing and really help them take it to the next level. And I think that's where we are now, you know, um, for a CPG company. And I, and I think I said this before, to be at the level we're at now as quickly as we are, it's not normal. Right. I think it's really a function of the capital that we've been able to raise and how smartly we've been able to deploy it. So, you know, with some additional capital that comes in, I think we'll be able to, again, use it smartly and, and use it to try to create value for our shareholders and the business as a whole. You know, we're adding more stores daily. We're in about 20 states now. Uh, we've landed distribution deals internationally. We're working with distributors now to add more countries. So as time progresses, you're going to start to see more and more stores come online, more and more states come online, more and more countries come online. And we're going to have to keep working hard to build this brand, it requires some capital. And I think we've been able to show that we can use it smartly. That is, to me, that is a big part of the market. I mean, you guys have done a lot of things very smartly. I mean, the stock is trading up 900%. So obviously investors have done extremely well. Now, one of the other things that you guys touched on in the news that caught my attention is the potential expansion into Asia. 
-hmm. with Miss Debbie Chang. Our community's all over that today. Everyone's talking about potential to expand it to Asia. Can you touch on that at all? Sure. There's a ton of opportunity in Asia. We have, you know, a, a high profile network of investors now in Asia that have relationships across the continent. So as we continue our commercialization efforts, Asia will be a key part of that because there are a ton of smokers in Asia. And our goal at this company is to put this product in front of every smoker on earth. That's what we're going to do. Well, that's what I want to try to do. And I think if we do that, the business will grow in lockstep with it. And we're talking about, you know, Asia being specifically China being the most populated country in the world. Rich, so, so there's more smokers in China than there are people in the US. Yeah, that's when you think about it from that perspective, that is absolutely game changing. And then when you're, is it safe to say that Horizon Ventures is the number one investor now, the largest investor in TAT? Uh, I believe that is correct. I would think, right? They've got 26 million invested in TAT now. Mm -hmm. At, you know, I know the first round was at about a dollar thirty. The first uh, sixteen million was at a dollar thirty. So they're already up close to two hundred percent on that investment. And now this investment today is at three dollars, which emphasizes that hey, you know what? Not only are they willing to invest, but they're also willing to spend a little more to support the company. They're not doing this ten million at a dollar thirty like no. they did last time. No. They did it at three bucks. Yeah. So essentially, what it shows me as an investor, and we love to look at the charts. But it shows me that $3 is kind of like the new floor for TAP. And if investors come in at that price, that's where I think investors that are trading this, if, if the stock dips to that price or lower, that's kind of the new floor that's been created for TAP. You can see it in the support. that every time the stock goes to that 320 or lower zone, people buy the stock up and it's bouncing back up. And here we are today back to 382. So... It shows me that Horizon Ventures believes that three dollars is a good price. Uh, yeah. When they're putting in ten million dollars at three bucks, that's not a small amount of money. No. And I'm sure what you mentioned, the companies they invest in, they're some of the biggest companies in the world. Mm -hmm. I'm sure they're doing their due diligence, and they've got analysts that analyze the company and determine a good price. They're not going to just throw ten million at three bucks just because I think that's a good price. They think that's a good price. I think that's very bullish for the stock. And you can see the company and the stock is responding in kind today. I agree. Um, look, there's no shortage of analysis that they do. And again, <clears throat> they see the progress that we've made. And I think it's as encouraging for them as it is for me. Let's talk about the 7-Eleven. Mm -hmm. 7-Elevens are big. Uh, we saw that Tad is at least in one 7-Eleven. Is that a sign of what's to come? Can we expect to see Tats across 7-Eleven chains? Is that coming next? Well, these are the things that we're working on, right? You typically start with a small subset. I think we were excited to land in our first one. And again, you, you, you take those wins and you try to expand on them. So that's kind of in the process we're in now. Very good, very good. Now, I want to go through some of these questions. I got a lot of questions here. Um, are you guys looking to expand to new products like chewing tobacco, CPG smoke, and cigars? Look, I'm looking at a lot of different uh, verticals that we can go after. I mean, for the immediate future, our focus is on the TAT as a combustible cigarette. And I think that there's a ton of runway that we want to start taking off from uh, before we start venturing off into other product categories. But yes, I mean, there's there's vape, there's heat not burn, there's chewing tobacco, there's snooze, there's cigars. I mean, there's no shortage of products that or, or, or verticals that we wouldn't be able to apply this technology to. So as we start establishing a toehold and a footprint with the current product, um, our product development team will start looking at different verticals that we can then expand into, right? I mean, it's no different than a lot of other sort of successful companies. I mean, if you think of Honda, 
as an example. Honda's very good at making a motor. Yeah. They build different things that wrap around that motor <laughs> and they sell those. So I think oftentimes it's, it's really a function of figuring out what is the core thing you're good at and then how can you apply it to different verticals to disrupt those verticals? So I understand that. And I think we'll be looking at that. Very good. And I know that you you like to keep everything very close and uh, you don't like to, you know, give everyone your playbook. So I think that's smart. And I think investors appreciate that. Um, can you talk a little bit, because our community here has so many questions. Can you talk a little bit about some of your distribution agreements? And is there one distributor that's been more successful than the others so far at getting tat on shelves? Is there like one distributor that's leading the way? It's a question from one of our members. I, I think we'll have some news on that uh, over the next little bit, but we've got a number of distributors online now. And a lot of that is based on the work that we've been doing at these trade shows uh, over the past couple of months. It's really allowed us to uh, meet with individual wholesalers, retailers, distributors, and, and I think we've been very successful at signing up a lot of them. So not to sort of front run the news, but I'm sure we'll have some updates on that soon. Very good. And I think that you guys do a great job of keeping the investors and the community behind TAT up to date as well as anyone. You we guys try are, to do our best, Rich. <laughs> you guys do a good job. Like every week there's one or two press releases. So that just keeps everybody updated on what's going on. I think it's great. And I have a question from Sebastian. Could you talk about the territory sales reps you wanted to hire? You offered several jobs on Indeed for Chicago, Las Vegas, et cetera. Did you hire some people? Could you talk about this? Uh, I think we did, but I'll have to follow up on on some of that. I mean, I'm involved in a lot of the aspects of the business, but sometimes when it gets to like certain deep in the weeds, uh, I can't sort of spend all day kind of managing the the the, the fine minutia. We got to sort of spend a lot of our time working on some of the bigger picture items like this. For sure. Well, that's that's growing to become a global company. So there's different people doing different things. Exactly. I totally understand that. Um, thank you for answering that. Um, any updates on how the NACS went? Listen, I think NACS went really, really well. Uh, again, I'm sure that we'll have some updates on that uh, over the next couple of weeks, but there's a number of very interesting discussions uh, currently in the works based on the work that we did at NACS. So it's a, it's a B2B style show for, for people who don't know what it is. It's the largest convenience store show in America. And you'll have exhibitors there from all the major distribution chain or all the major distributors, uh, a lot of the national chains, all sort of products that you would otherwise sell within the convenience channel. Um, so it, it really is a, a show of the sort of who's who in the industry. And I think that we put a very good foot forward. And I think a lot of people were impressed with the product that we had. Again, oftentimes people can hear the story. People can read the news, people can watch a video, but when you're able to sit and interact with them on a one-to-one -one basis and you can physically show them the product and say, look, this is real. Like I'm, we're not making this up. And then they'll try it and be like, holy crap, you're, you're right. Like this is not what I thought it was. Um, that's where I think the power of these shows is, right? It, it, it's just different. And I think going forward, uh, now that things are starting to open up, it's going to form a core part of our strategy on the sales side, because it allow, it basically brings all of your customers into one place. And now you can have a much more productive discussion because they're all there with open ears to learn, right? Very good. Yeah. I have a question from the investment ABC. Is TAT getting the revenue straight from the distributor and the distributor has the risk if the product isn't sold in retail stores? Or is TAT only getting paid if consumers are buying the product? Mm -mm. It's a good question. It's a great question. I think I, I covered this many, many, many months ago. We have customers and we have consumers. Okay. Our customer is a distributor. They're the ones who pay us and buy the product. Our consumer is the smoker. They're the ones that go into a convenience store and buy the product from the retailer. We don't sell other than online direct to the consumer. So when we sell, we sell and collect money from distributors. 
when someone goes in to buy the product, they're paying the retailer who then pays the, well, the retailer would have already paid the distributor for that product. Okay. Yeah. So I think that, that's an important um, distinction to make. Like there's a, in this category or in CPG as a whole, there's a difference between your customer and your consumer. We sell to distributors and wholesalers and in certain cases, retailers, if they're of a certain size. Fantastic. And I know that I've asked you this before, but this is keeps coming up. Any updates on the NASDAQ listing? I don't have any more updates other than the ones that we covered. I mean, again, it's in the process. I mean, we'll, Absolutely. But listen, it, it takes as long as it takes. <laughs> I, of course. I, yeah. I don't have the stamp on the other side that I can sort of hit. <laughs> so. I think that, uh, you know, Tat's really grown very quickly. I don't really know too many other companies I can think of that were public for 16 months and then got listed on the NASDAQ. I'm sure there are examples, um, but it, it just takes, it takes some time. But the reality is, I think we know that at some point you guys will be listed on the NASDAQ. And when that does happen, that will be another catalyst for investors and that'll be another catalyst for the stock. So I think that that's the question that we've asked Seti a lot. So if you guys have any other questions, please let us know. Um, because we don't want to keep pounding that same question over and over again. I know we had set to you on just last week. And we asked the exact same question. So nothing has changed in one week. No. Um, except the fact that Tat has an extra $10 million. Yeah, that's now, it. Is there anything specific that you want to spend that $10 million on? Or is it just general working uh, purposes? It's general working purposes. But more specifically, it's really going to be spent on building the brand, and ramping up on some of the production because in the beginning you're, you're basically in a seeding stage right i mean if you look at something like philip morris or altria they could probably forecast the number of, of cigarettes they need to make in a year down to the carton because everybody like, they're already in every store and they know what every store sells in the beginning when you're launching you're you're basically producing as the orders start coming in, you'll, you'll start overproducing a bit to kind of help fulfill some of that, that initial demand. But as the deals get signed, you're going to start producing. Um, so we want to be able to ramp that up so that we can start fulfilling uh, more quickly. But I think a lot of it is going to be on brand building. And I, and I think I said this in another interview as well. I mean, you could have the best mousetrap in the world. If nobody knows that you have it, nobody's going to buy it. So true. So, so true. And I think that's the, the challenge a lot of new companies face oftentimes. They think they have the best mousetrap and the world's going to beat a path down to their door. They might if they knew about it. And if you really want to succeed in CPG, it's a brand building exercise. Like there's marketing initiatives. We got to get product into smokers' hands. We got to get them trying it. We got to get them connecting with the brand. We got to get them buying and wanting to continue to buy the product. So that's a lot of the work that we're going to be doing now because we're already building the infrastructure on the distribution side to get the product out. And I've always said, there's three things that, that you need to do in order to succeed in this business. Can you make a product? Can you put it on the shelf? Can you get it off the shelf? So I think we've done the first two very, very well. And I think a lot of the focus going forward is going to be on number three. I have a question from the investment ABC. How many quarters does SETI think the 10 million will last with current cash burn and projected revenue? Listen, it, I don't want to dance around the question, but I mean, it depends. At this early stage in a company, there's a lot of opportunities that come up that you're either going to want to take advantage of or you're not. So you're not at a steady state yet. I might get presented with some astronomically amazing opportunity tomorrow where we'll have to invest some of that capital and then okay the the return might not be for a few months so you might be in that sort of window so it's difficult for me to sort of articulate that given the complexity and um fast how rapidly the the opportunities can change in front of you the, the best answer i can give you is that i try to stay as nimble as possible and strike where I think it makes sense. That's great. 
Now, this is actually a great question from Tyrell. It seems like there are major delays coming with imports and exports at ports right now. Will there, um, will that have any major impacts on Tat's business? I know it's affecting, it's affecting Apple with chip shortages. It's, uh, it's affecting some of the biggest companies in the world. I know that Biden announced yesterday that they're going to be doing emergency 24 hour around the clock distribution with Walmart and other chains so that people can get their Christmas gifts. Like this has to have some type of impact on Tat. Is that something that you guys are seeing as an impact or do you? Yeah. Think I mean, listen, cool? there's some product, there's some component parts that regardless of whether we buy them in the U S the, the underlying piece might be coming from overseas. So we are seeing some delays on the supplier side. Um, and we were trying to mitigate them as best we can. Like in certain cases, all right, if I need to get product over instead of sending it by ship, okay, we'll send it by air. It might cost a bit more, but those are one-time costs. So where we can, if it becomes a bit more expensive just for a, a short period of time while this backlog is alleviated, we want to try to do everything that we can so that we don't sort of delay product into the market. But I mean, these are global issues that are far beyond my control. That's right. Um, if we can find creative solutions, we will. Uh, otherwise, I mean, if, if stuff's on a ship and it's stuck in the middle of the Atlantic because there's 70 ships in front of it, I haven't learned how to drive a ship yet, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> you could just grab a helicopter, airlift the tats up off the ship, and yeah. take them to their destination. Um, so great, great questions. And a lot of the members agree that branding is everything. Now, you guys seem to be just the store locators just blowing up over a thousand. Um, how often do you guys update that store locator? Is that like a weekly thing or? Uh, yeah, we try to update it as, as frequently as we can. And I think what everybody also needs to understand in certain cases, we might not have all of the stores displayed on the store locator because certain distributors might not necessarily want to share it. Certain stores may not necessarily want to share it, and I can't force anybody to share it. I mean, it's, uh, it's effectively used as a, a marketing piece for those stores so that we can tell consumers that are coming to our site where they might be able to go to find tat. Some may want to participate, some may not. So that's not really the be all and end all. Like if it's not on that store lo locator, the store doesn't exist. I understand. It's, it's very likely that oftentimes there, we have more stores selling tat than you will see on the store locator. I understand. How is the online store performing compared to the retail stores? Do you have those stats or do you know which ones like, are doing better? Online is fine, but online in this particular category is never going to outpace the sale on brick and mortar. So I know like okay. in general, the, 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 the general thinking around this e-com is going to, you know, displace brick and mortar. And in many categories, I think that has the potential to be true in tobacco. I really don't because Okay, you take America, there's like 400,000 points of sale that sell tobacco in America. You're never really more than 10 steps away from a store that sells a pack of cigarettes. So if I'm a smoker and I want a pack of cigarettes, I want it in 10 seconds. I don't want it in two days. Of course. So, you know, I think for people who are interested in trying the product, I know that, you know, we run a great promotion on TriTat where you can get your first pack for free. And then off of that, we can try to you know, move you over to be a purchasing uh, customer online. But I think the preference in general for smokers is always to just go to a convenience store. I mean, I, I've got five of them within like 30 seconds of me. I just got this idea, like an epiphany, giving tats to your friends and family for Christmas, like buying cartons. Hell of a stocking stuffer, Rich. Yeah, right? <laughs> Well, if you know that your if you know that your friends are smoking, yeah. what better gift than a carton of tats because they got no tobacco, no nicotine, and they're half price. I mean, you're really helping your friends and family if you're giving them tats. I, I'm a big fan of people who are helpful. That's right. That's right. Um, so I have a question here. Great questions from the investment ABC. Have you reached sorry, if have you reduced THC from 0.3% to 0.2% with the new base material? to be able to sell in Europe, because apparently that is uh, what is needed in order for them to qualify to sell in Europe. Oh yeah, we can do that. Very good, very good. 
All right. And any other questions, guys? Uh, haven't heard much about Crossmark lately. Any updates on that partnership? Okay, the partnerships, I think, is still going fine. I mean, again, like we'll likely have some news over the next little bit. Like we've added a lot of distributors, uh, a lot more stores. So the product's starting to roll as far as I'm concerned. All right. I think those are most of the questions that I have so far. Um, if you guys have any other questions, please put it in right now before we say goodbye. I know Seti is extremely busy uh, helping build this brand to a global brand. I remember a year and a half ago when I would say TAT, people didn't know what TAT was. They didn't know what it is. Now people are saying TAT and they assume you know what a TAT is. So it's really come a long way, even with branding. Um, anything that you want to talk about, Seti, while we have 107 people watching on social media right now, anything you want to talk about to the shareholders that are watching from all over the world? Well, look, I think, again, I think that we've done a very good job on building this business thus far. Uh, it's starting to grow quickly. There's a tremendous amount of opportunity in front of us. And I think that we're well positioned to take advantage of it as it comes. So, you know, for us, we're, we're very pleased with how we've been able to build this business thus far. There's still a ton of work left to do um, and a ton of mountain to climb, but we're definitely climbing it. And you guys are doing a great job. And one of our members, Marseille, is, is he's received some tat shirts and he wears them. And he says that everywhere he goes, people ask him what's a tat. So I guess the uh, branding is working because the members love the branding as well. That's awesome. Well, I appreciate that. And we'll have uh, branded merchandise available uh, in Q1. So I'm looking forward to that too. I think it's some pretty awesome looking stuff actually. And a quick question. Can you keep up with the market demand and is the new production plant running at 100% capacity? Uh, it's not running at 100% capacity yet, uh, so we have ample we have capacity. Um, we're actually looking at expanding a lot of the contract manufacturing that we have as well, so that we can start ramping up production as these orders start coming in because they're starting to come in. Well, Seti, thank you so much for your time again. Congratulations on another successful raise. So you guys' balance sheet is healthy, strong. You guys can continue on your plan. Thank you for joining us on Rich TV Live. Thank you jo for joining us in front of all the members from all over the world that are watching. Like I've told you guys before, if you're not winning, you're not watching. We bring in the winners and we bring them to you first. We were the first ones ever to talk about everyone, uh, to everyone in our community about TAC Global Alternatives when they were pre-IPO at 41 cents. We said that they had a chance to be a great winner. Here we are 16 months later and we're now talking about a product that is expanding on a global scale. We're talking about Europe, Asia, Obviously, we're already in America. So congratulations on all your success, Seti. Thanks, and Rich. Continue, and continue all your hard work and effort, my friend. Thank you, sir. Until the next time. Yes. Have a great day, Seti. Costarella, the CEO of TAC Global Alternatives. Thank you for watching, everybody. Have a great day. It's your boy, Rich, from Rich TV Live. And I'm out. Peace.